Hi Kipsters, this is Mr. Almeida coming to you for another lesson in Logical Mathematics. You know in mathematics it's very important for you to be able to explain how you got your answer. But you've always been asked why a particular answer is true. Explain how you know it is true. Well the most important thing in being able to explain yourself is having a definition. And one of the ways that we can actually have a definition is to know some basic properties in mathematics that are constantly true. And I'm going to help to define them for you today so that you can use this information as we move throughout the year in mathematics. So we're going to talk about the properties of real numbers. A property in mathematics is a rule. It's a characteristic that will always be true. Okay? So let's move along. The first property I want to talk to you about is the commutative property. Now the commutative property both applies to addition and multiplication. Say for example I have 3 plus 7. Well, can I also switch the order of those add-ends, which are numbers that you use to add, and say 7 plus 3. 3 plus 7 is 10, and 7 plus 3 is 10. Well, 10 is equal to 10. So as we can see, the sum doesn't change. 5 times 8, if I just change the order of the factors, which are numbers that we use to multiply, I'll get 8 times 5. 5 times 8 is 40, and 8 times 5 is 40. So as we can see, changing the order does not change the result. A good way to remember the commutative property using some gestures is if you change the order of the numbers, then the result still stays the same. Okay? And the key word there is order. All I'm doing is changing the place of where the numbers are being located. Let's move to the next one. Associative property. Now we both know that you can only add or multiply two numbers at a time. And so the associative property helps us to say that it doesn't matter how you group, that means how you add or multiply two numbers at a time, it's not going to change the result. And so here, in this case, I'm not changing any order of the numbers. Here I have 4 plus 3 plus 5 equals 4 plus 3 plus 5. But I'm choosing to add 4 plus 3 first. I'm getting 7. And then I'm adding 5 to get 12. Here, I'm going to add 3 plus 5 first to get 8. And 8 plus 4 to get 12 as well. Notice how the result did not change. But I did group the numbers differently. Does that make sense? Grouping differently. So the associative property means that I can group numbers differently without changing the result. And the same works for multiplication as well. 3 times 4 is 12, times 2 is 24. Let's do 2 times 3, that's 6. Times 4 is 24. As we can see, the result does not change. Let's move on to the next property in mathematics. It's called the identity property of addition. The identity property of addition says, and we see the direction of my hands, my thumbs are going in the same direction, okay? So they're identical if I put them right over one another. Identity property of addition says that if I add zero, okay, there's nothing in between here. If I add zero to an addend, then I'll get a sum of the addend. So if I add zero to a number, I'll get the same number as the answer. And that's what I'm getting. 17 plus 0 equals 17. Same number being added to 0 will give you the same number. Okay? 96 plus 0, or 0 plus 96, will give me 96. Because I have 96, and I'm not adding anything to it. And I have 17, and I'm not adding anything to it. I'm still going to have 17. Next one. The inverse property of addition. Now look at the direction of my thumbs. The inverse property of addition means that we are literally going to be taking the opposite, okay? So, if you add a number to its opposite, you will get zero, okay? It'll always give you zero. Thirteen plus, well, what's the opposite of thirteen? Think on the number line. Opposite of thirteen is where it's located on the negative side, so that is negative thirteen. So if I add 13 to negative 13, I will get 0. Okay? 76. Subtract 76 equals 0. Because what do I have? I have 76. And what's the opposite of 76? Negative 76. And I get 0. 
One key thing that you should remember is subtraction is adding the opposite. Subtraction is adding the opposite. So if I say 76, subtract 76, then the opposite of 76 is what? Negative 76. So I'm adding a negative 76, and I'll still get zero. Okay, subtraction is adding the opposite. Subtraction is the inverse of addition. The identity property of multiplication says this. If you have a number and you multiply it by one, you will get the same number, okay? If you have a, a factor and you multiply it by one, you will get the same number factor as your product, okay? I have 15. I'm multiplying it by 1. Therefore, I should get the same identical answer, 15. I have 3 fourths, and I'm multiplying 3 fourths by 1. It's going to equal 3 fourths. Any number multiplied by 1 will give you the same number as your answer. The inverse property of multiplication says that if you multiply a number by its reciprocal, and how do you find the reciprocal? You basically have to look at the number first in fraction form. If it's not in fraction form, just put the number over 1. So how do I make 16 as a fraction? I put 16 over 1, and now 16 is a fraction. And what happens is to find the reciprocal, you just invert the numerator and the denominator. So the 16 now becomes the denominator, and the 1 now becomes the numerator. And that's why this is 1 16. So any number multiplied by its reciprocal gives you 1. Okay? It'll always give you that. 4 fifths. That's already in fraction form. Times, well, let's invert the numerator and denominator. 5 fourths will give you 1 because 5 times 4 times 5 is 20 and 5 times 4 is 20. 20 over 20 or 20 divided by 20 is 1. Okay? Division is the inverse of multiplication. That's why when you say 16 divided by 16, you're really saying 16 times 1 16th. Okay? When you divide, you actually are multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay? And that will always get you back to 1. Any number times its reciprocal gives you 1. The zero property of multiplication is fairly simple. Any number times 0 will give you 0. Alright? That is true all the time. Why? Because of the basic meaning of multiplication. Well, 6 times 0 means to add 0 6 times. Well, let's add 0 6 times. 0 plus 0 is 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, and 0 plus 0 is 0. I get 0 again. Now, 0 times 19 means to write 19 0 times. Well, I'm not going to write 19 at all. And what do I have if I didn't write anything to start off with in the beginning? I had nothing. So the answer is nothing. Any number times 0 will give you 0. Any number times 0 will give you 0. And that ends our properties for the day.